Okay, so I decided in all my infinite wisdom I'd go back in time and save Chi, and with the help of certain time travelers, it's been easy enough. The only problem is, I think something went wrong. Something's changed when I went back. Now everyone looks like an anime character. I mean, I don't think I would screw up that badly. How could I incite a fashion trend like this? All I need is an outsider's opinion on the subject! Does this place seem normal to you? Yes. Oh. Good. Well, I can't let that stop me from reviewing Soul Eater now, can I? It's just another excuse, but I'm sure you'll understand. But for once, I got something here I was happy with. Something that actually matches up to a representation of the series it's following. Now, I'll tell you about the plot of this series, but the problem is I seem to have misplaced all my manga when I went back in time, so it's going to be kind of hard for me to kind of... Maka is a weapon meister, determined to turn her partner, a living scythe named Soul Eater, into a powerful death scythe, the ultimate weapon of death himself. Charged with the task of reaping tainted souls, Maka and her fellow meisters strive to master their weapons as they face off against the bizarre and dangerous minions of the underworld. But the meister's own personal quirks may prove a bigger obstacle than any solitary enchantress. Okay, that's kind of vague, but basically the catch is that the weapons have a sort of human form they can take on, which is where the partner relationship dynamics come into play during the combat in the series. There are three main character groups to choose from. The first is Maka and Soul Eater, who has a main weapon of a scythe, as explained earlier. Next is Blackstar and Tsubaki, who can turn into a variety of ninja tools. And finally, there is Death the Kid, with his two guns, Liz and Patty. They also holds the title of the stupidest way to hold firearms in anime history. Yeah, that's kind of dumb. There are other characters to choose from here as well, but we'll focus on these three first since they are the ones you'll be using most of the time. You have two modes you'll be spending most of your time in, arcade and adventure. That is unless you have a friend. What we have here though is a very basic fighting game, nothing too overly fancy, and we'll start with the adventure mode. You have a choice of your three main characters, and each follows their story arc, or close to it, to a certain degree. This is very reminiscent of the adventure mode in Naruto games, with similar layouts and objectives. You are introduced to the main protagonists, if you would call them that, including Death and Cat Witch Boo Woman. Oh, I'm sorry, Blair. You are thrown into combat relatively quickly, your first time, and there really isn't a whole lot to pick up. You have a basic set of attacks which should carry you through most battles and consist of high and low attacks with your default weapon. Combat is simplistic and flows much like the early Tekken games with blocking and jumping playing out the same way with walking backwards and pressing up. They have thrown in a few elements to tie in the game to its franchise though including a counter move and specials linked to the soul bar at the bottom of the screen. This is where I bring up the reference to Naruto again, as you will see what I mean soon in comparisons. In Naruto, you have Chakra. You focus your Chakra to build up your Chakra meter, and it's spent to use your skills. In Soul Leader, you have Souls. You focus your Souls to build up your Soul meter, and it's spent to use your skills. Of course, I should mention that both of these games were developed by the same company, so it's safe to assume why they would carry over a formula that works here. 
During moments you get knocked down, you're presented with an opportunity to fill up your meter by entering a specific button that's shown on screen. You can also charge up your soul meter by holding the charge button. Your bar is separated into three sections, and once a section is full, you can hit L1 which causes a shockwave to push your enemy back, which buys you a few seconds. This can be useful if you're in a tight spot, or you need a second to rejuvenate or to charge your soul meter some more. You can use these segments to unleash the special attacks I noted before, or simply wait till they have all three sections full, and then press L1 to unleash... Your ultimate attack! This spectacular attack, different for each character, drains about three quarters of the opponent's health and will usually end the battle. It's the equivalent of the Street Fighter ultimate attacks, as it's usually the one who's been getting wailed on the whole time that has the ability to unleash this attack. It's supposed to balance out the combat, but I found myself using it virtually every battle. It isn't overly hard to accomplish, and it's impossible to dodge if you get close enough. Usually this is the trump card you save if you're in serious trouble. Now the formula for adventure mode follows a similar path with you engaging in battle with an enemy, then a new path being opened for you. Yet you can return to previous areas where extra conditions are added to enhance difficulty, being it executing a certain number of blocks or parries, or something as simple as just defeating yourself, or a shadow version of your rivals. Now this would be fine, but half the time I don't know what I'm supposed to do to accomplish said goals, and most of them being figured out on the fly. I managed to get through nearly all the adventure mode by just experimenting with these artificial difficulty enhanced sections, yet some of them I just could not figure out, as they required me to do something, yet I could not press any buttons. I suppose it limits you only to the one mechanic you're supposed to use during these fights, but you need to fulfill a certain amount of these challenges in order to continue the game, and if you can't do that, well, you're stuck. I did manage to make it through most of the adventure mode before fighting a white penguin in a top hat and one of those ball thing chain guys from Mario, but overall it was a relatively simple process and if it wasn't for one problem, one you may have picked up on through this footage. The main problem you'll face is the hit detection. It's highly frustrating sometimes. There is a certain window where the enemies are completely invulnerable to your attacks, yet this window is unusually large for a fighting game, and you'll find your attacks going through your opponents more often than not. Couple that with the insane counter protection the game has on some of the higher difficulties, and you'll find yourself scratching your head. Of course, difficulty increases as you progress through the adventure mode, and can be modified in the options for the arcade, but overall, its simplistic mechanics make it a little less challenging than most fighters out there, and if you have any experience with any sort of fighter, you won't have much trouble here. Well, after that whole debacle with the adventure mode, you should have unlocked most of the characters in the arcade mode, so I'll just play through that quickly and get the credit screen so I can say I finished the game. There we go. You can continue immediately even if you lose a fight with no penalty here, so there's really nothing to lose. Plus, after all that fighting, it's good to finally get to sit back and relax and enjoy all your spoils. Screenshots from the series. That's it. They unlock as you progress through the story or arcade, and I guess characters could also be counted as unlocks, but overall it's really nothing to get excited about. As a fighter, Soul Eater Battle Resonance is to Soul Eater fans as Naruto Ultimate Ninja is to Naruto fans. It's their token game, yet it's so eerily similar in its mechanics, maybe it's just better off to go get the game that's already available here. If you're a Soul Eater fan, there's nothing here beyond watching the characters fight each other, but you spend the entire series seeing them do that anyway. Then again, you could say the same thing for any Naruto game, the Ruini Kenshin games, pretty much most fighting games. If you're a Soul Eater fan and a fighting game fan, this is definitely for you. But outside that demographic, probably you're better off just sticking to the anime series. That way you can be sure that the characters will actually hit something when they attack. Well, the world's like this.
this now, just full of anime characters. I guess I just gotta get used to it. Don't be so sure about that. Oh hell, not you again. That doesn't even make any damn sense. You didn't even appear until episode 4. Surely we're before episode 1 now. You never really went back in time. That's beyond science in this dimension. So you were just knocked out and taken to the anime convention. Not. You couldn't possibly be referring to WICON, the Perth West Australian Anime and Manga Convention which took place on the 29th and 30th of January this year that I and all my good mates went to and who did cameos in this very episode. Copyright images 2011, sources in the description. The very same. Oh, for God's sake, it was all imaginary. Hey, you needed to move on. There is a world of companions out there for you. You just need to go out there and find one. Clinging to a dead one won't help you, so you really need some help finding someone. Oh jeez man, you gotta stop that. No, 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 no. I am done with any kind of robot, fake, esper, alien, god, girls. Serious, but the problem is I seem to have misplaced my manga, so it's gonna be kind of hard for me to. <laughs> <laughs> practice just hitting your head. Can I practice? Yes, you can practice. <laughs> <laughs>